and it's now recording. I'm using the webcam here as, as the mic um, for, for this particular session. So this is all about YouTube, and uh, this particular, again, session is about you using YouTube for your videos, for whatever videos you do. If you do um, a screencast of something, and you know, or if you wanted to have somebody videotape you, I'm going to show you that with this little flip cam that I have that's available for checkout. Uh, and I do have a tripod um, if you really want to do something like that. But to use YouTube for your delivery as opposed to using some other methods. Now, we do have others at the college. We, we have our own server that we have um, that you could put your videos on there too. But I want to show you some advantages of using YouTube um, and how the video manager has just been transformed. And one of the biggest pieces, and I can mention this to Rosalind, is the captioning. One of the biggest issues that we have with any kind of videos or audio is getting them captioned. Um, Rosalind is one person that does it, and I think that Mary is another person, and that's about it <laughs> at the college. So if you think about all the videos that are done, um, it becomes really difficult to get those captions and ready for accessibility. And I'm going to show you that in YouTube, that what YouTube will do is it will actually machine transcribe. It takes about a day, depending on how long your video is, but it will machine transcribe your captioning to a certain extent, your voice, and it'll be okay. I mean, there will, you will see some weird mistakes, but the beautiful thing is that you can now go in and edit that. So you could literally, if you did a, a lecture, you know, maybe a 10 or 15 minute thing, you could literally have that up in YouTube and have that captioned within 10 minutes, just fixing the mistakes that it makes and it's captioned and ready for accessibility. So that is one of the, to me, one of the big, big, big things that has changed. But there's a lot of other stuff that, that also has changed in there. Um, for those that had registered, I sent an email this morning with a link to this uh, agenda. So these links that I have in here, are, are you should have them in your email. I'll send this out again so that you'll have it in another spot. But what do you need? First, you need a Google account. Okay. Now, again, there's a misconception about what that means. How many of you have a Gmail account? You have a Google account. How many of you have a YouTube account? You have a, you, you have a Google account. Bottom line is, is that you have a Google account. Most people do, and if you don't, you can go and get one. But here's the thing, is that if you're going to start using this for your class, I would strongly recommend you getting a new, another Google account. You can have as many Google, well, I, let me put it, you used to be able to have as many Google accounts as you wanted, but I think that Google has gotten a little bit uh, smart in, because one of the things you have to do in order to increase your, your limit, your time limit on, on YouTube, is put in your um, mobile number and they send you a text message and then that text message has a code in it that you put in to provide you with unlimited time as much time as you want you know videos 50 minutes 60 minutes doesn't matter um, I found out that after I've done this a number of times in a number of trainings uh, Google says I think this is this cell phone number has been connected to too many accounts <laughs> so um, but given that, I don't think all of you probably created too many. What I would suggest is create one that you're going to use for your class that's, that's separate from your personal you know, account. I mean, I personally use Gmail. I've been using Gmail for my personal account for a long time. Even though at home I'm on Roadrunner, I haven't used my Roadrunner account for mail forever. Um, so you know, I don't want to put my videos into my personal account that's going to, my students are going to see. You know, so I want to separate. So what you would do is to create a Google account. <laughs> yeah, nah, I'll just go here. Um, when you come to Google, and actually, let me bring up another browser. <clears throat> So I can sign out. When you come to Google, I'm going to sign out. Um, you'll click on this sign in, and then it'll say create an account for free. So when you create an account for free, you give yourself first name and last name, 
And if you want to use your name, you can or whatever. Um, we could put, you know, your class for the first and last name. They expect the first and last name. You choose a username, and they'll tell you if it's taken or not. Um, and it will put the, you will get a Gmail account with it, but again, you don't have to use all of the Google services that are provided. Um, again, you, if you're going to use it for all of your classes, you want, may want to make it more generic than have one for each individual class, because I think you won't, you'll run out of accounts. Give yourself a password. Make sure you remember what it is. Here's the beautiful thing. You can give yourself a birth date. <laughs> much earlier one. <laughs> so you, you don't have to. And the gender one is kind of funny, too. Other. Because <laughs> um, you're not really. Okay. And then you put your mobile number in. I know some people get fearful of putting their mobile number in. With Google, you're going to get all kinds of spam. You really don't. But if you, if you don't put your mobile phone in, because this is the way the world is going, the way the world is, it's text messaging. If you don't have, you don't have a mobile. I have a mobile, but I don't text. But you can get a text. And make only cost you 25 cents. You don't have a plan. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. That's okay. <laughs> but, but, but this, without, without doing this, you, you cannot increase your time limit on, on YouTube. YouTube used to be, like, at the beginning, five minutes. Then it went up to 10. I think they're at 15 or 20. I think it's 15. Um, and if you're doing a lecture, or if you wanted to do something that was longer than that, you couldn't use YouTube because it would cut you off. So you can do that now. Um, you leave the current email address alone. So let me, let me try to see if I can put something in here. Uh, me, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see if it's taken. You click off of that, somebody took it. <laughs> Let's take uh, nine, seven. God, really? <laughs> me, you, and me again. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not a good password. It'll tell you, you know, the strength is not good. Uh, I know. Um, let me put something that I know. There we go. And I can put my birth date. And I'll make my year 19. Make myself younger because I want to. And I'll make a mail. So let's see if it won't let, if it'll let me do it. So you can skip the, the again, the current email address. You don't put that in there because you don't, you don't need that. Um, if, you can, if you skip the phone verification, again, you won't, you're still going to be asked to do it. You'll see in a minute. Um, I don't remember what my name is. And then where it says, you know, Google may use your account information, I'm going to uncheck that, but I'm going to check the agreement. Of course, I have to put this stuff in. That's not too bad. And, and by the way, that's called CAPTCHA. Maybe you, many of you don't know it. Many of you are aware of it. It's a nuisance. But the reason that's done is because it's, it's, looking, it's looking for a real person to type that in. Computers supposedly cannot capture that. So they don't want like, these computer robots to go out and constantly create all these accounts, even though we are. So when I go next step, hey, welcome me and you. And me again, one, two, three, four, five. So this is this has created the account. So the next step in the process, so I have an account that's separate from my thing. The next step in the process is to go to YouTube. And then I have to sign in. I, this is what I don't I don't think is I think is a little weird, but you have to sign in on the YouTube account. I will put in there the account, you know, what I'm in. And keep in mind that if you do have another Google account that you use, you're going to be constantly signing in on one and signing out on another. So it's just one of those things if you're going to use this for class. 
Okay, that's good. So I signed in. So I created an account. It gives me, you know, welcome to my home page. I can just go ahead and close that. And then I can look at my ads and close the ads, which will always show up. So this is my Google account. So the next step in the process is to increase the time uh, limit on, my, on YouTube. Um, one of the things I guess I just wanted to point out, one of the beautiful things about YouTube is that there's many different video file formats, MP4s, AVIs, WMV, uh, MOV, I mean there's a slew of different kinds of video formats. And one of the issues that can happen is that, that if students don't have the right player, if you put these videos up in, in, in your course, they may not be able to see it. So by moving it up into YouTube, YouTube will convert them and just deal with it. It doesn't matter. And then it's all web-based and it makes it so much easier. You know, and then you don't waste space, of course, in your angel course. And the other, you know, even with our uh, upload tool, you know, they have to be in specific formats in order to be up there. They can't be in all these different formats. So again, you may put it up there and it all of a sudden doesn't play because it's not encoded in this H.263. And I know you have no idea what that means, but it doesn't matter. The point is, this is why it doesn't matter, because you put it up there and it will take care of it. So if you put it up in our server and hadn't, haven't encoded it right, then that presents, then the students can't see it. So the next thing is to determine uh, the time limit. So to do the time limit, what I do, and this is strange, but what you do is you click on the upload. I know I can be on here. I'm just forget. You click on the upload, and it's going to ask you to set up uh, your channel for YouTube. This is another nice thing with, with YouTube, because you, when you set up a channel, your students can subscribe to that channel. And when they subscribe to that channel, when you put up a new video, they're automatically going to get that when they log into their, to their Google account or their YouTube account. And if you don't think that they don't have a YouTube account, probably. You should see my son, 18 years old. Um, so, so again, naming the channel, you know, something like, and you can have multiple, you can have multiple channels, I believe, I think, um, or maybe not. I, I can't remember, but, you know, it could be, you know, my class. That's my channel. And then again, it wants to do stuff with Google Plus, and you don't want to be bothered with that. So you uncheck that. So continue to the upload. And something's wrong here. What did I do wrong? Name replace me. Enter a full name. Yeah, it doesn't like not having full names. Fine. Whatever. How about I just cancel that for now? <laughs> All right. When I cancel that, I'm in the upload. You'll see down at the bottom, increase your limit. So once you get into the upload, you go to increase your limit. There we go. And this is what it's going to do. So actually, you get a voice call. So you don't have to have a, a text message. So it will call you, I guess, and give you that. This is where um, we'll see if it'll allow me. Hey, look at that. I guess after a little while, Google forgets who you are. So I should get a text message. What? You got my message. And that's because I put in the wrong number. Hide your eyes. Yeah, that's what you get. But what you will get is a text with a code in it, as you saw on the next screen, that you put in that code and it's, you're done. You're, you're unlimited. So you can put up a 20, 30, 40, 50 minute, 60 minute, 70 minute, three hour 
three-hour video you can put up. It doesn't matter. But, of course, I can't because of, of what I just did here. Okay? So, let's say you have a video now and you want to upload it. How do you do that? Very simple process. Well, let, let, me, let me take the webcam, or I'm sorry, the clip cam. I know you all want to be on YouTube, right? It's going to go viral. <laughs> you know, I, I just have to say, uh, uh, I just have to, people who put YouTube videos up and say, I was just putting it up for my friends and family, <laughs> and never thought about the idea that they, um, yeah, yeah. and if they were thinking that, yeah, but if they were thinking that, if that was the truth, then they should have listed it as unlisted. Now, I'm going to talk about the different, um, you know, the basic information, but if you, if you have your video as unlisted, then only those people with the link can view it. If it's public and by default, that means it's open to the world. And if it's unlisted, nobody can search it. That's a difference. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm going to go ahead to, um, well, when I go into YouTube, you'll see where the upload is right here. So I click upload. You'll notice that th these are new things now. So, so from the, the last time that I was on YouTube from about a week ago, and this is what Google does, the interface has changed a little bit. So you could literally now create a video using your webcam. You can create a photo slideshow also. And if you are on Google, you know, have a Google account, Google Plus has something called Google Hangouts. And you can actually broadcast a Google Hangout. Now, only nine people can interact and can see you. The other people can text but can hear you. And it actually gets uh, automatically saved. And that's another whole time, but it gets saved into YouTube. So I'll go ahead and do record from a webcam here. And then I'll allow, sorry about this. There you go. So, so I'm going to go ahead and record. And you'll notice that it's not really that good. <laughs> and, and that's because this computer has other things running on it. You saw a little message at the bottom saying the computer is running a little slow. So, but it's not too bad. And I'll go ahead and stop the recording. And then I can just click upload. Now that's if, you know, now it's getting uploaded to YouTube. And it's going to deal, you know, deal with it up there. If I happen to have a, a video, and again, I definitely want to do one. And I'll do it at 720. And now I'm recording. This is a webcam, and everybody is having a great time. Look at everybody smiling. <laughs> <laughs> it's lunch. I know. Everybody's smiling. So. Have you ever used the flip cams? They're phenomenal. They're phenomenal. And I just did a little recording. So the, the, the beauty of the web of the flip cam is um, if I can get it on the right side. It's hard to get it out. Yep, that's the come on. That's a flipless cam. It's a flipless cam. <laughs> trying to get the USB cable out. Not working, but well. Uh, yeah, I need something. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm down there. Uh, yeah, that's the Kodak one. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong place. Uh, yeah, they're they're good. So all I do is plug it into the USB port there, and so. Hopefully it'll recognize it. Maybe I'll put it down here. I'm not sure if I'm going to recognize it. So again, if I go to YouTube and go to upload, there we go. In in this case, you know, I select the file to upload. So it's just like you know, searching any of your computers, and 
There's removal of this. And it's an MOV. That's the one we just did. And I can see that, you know, that was today, right now. I guess the timing, time on that's wrong. And I go to, uh, I go to open, and it's going to do its upload into YouTube, and YouTube will then process it. That's how easy it is to get a video up there. I mean, so you'll see at the end of my session, when I, when I stop the recording from the smart board, it'll create a file, an AVI in this case, and I'll just go to my YouTube account. The, uh, all the, the IDTs, we created a, a YouTube account um, where we're putting all our tutorials, everything up there now. And I'll just move it up, to, up there, and it will process. Can you view the first here, see if that's your criteria in your screen? Uh, no. I mean, when you before you so upload it. Before well, no, you could watch it. On, yeah, I mean, you can watch it on the on the on the flip camera. Okay. Certainly. Yeah, I'm just you know doing it for demonstration purposes. Once it's uploaded, you know, it's it's up there now. It's processing. So it's taking this video, which is in MOV format, and doing whatever it needs to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The the other beautiful thing about YouTube is that it's ready for the mobile device too. So when you put your video up there, if the student wants to watch it, they can put it up on the mobile device. And if you have a mobile device, you know that you can take a video with your with your and just push a little share and click on push YouTube. And as long as you put in your account, it goes up to your YouTube. And and the and there is um, for the, both the uh, Apple for the iPhone and for the Androids, there's a, a, a native app. Um, there's an app that says YouTube. So it used to be that it was like going through the web kind of interface. Now it's really native, and they're they're going to do enhancements on it. I'll tell you one other neat thing: if you have an iPhone, and it's not for the Android yet, and that's really unusual because Google, of course, is connected to the Android. They have a new app called Capture, Google Capture. So you could actually, I push that, and I take a video, and I sit, stop it, and it automatically goes up to YouTube. And that's only on, it's an app only on the iPhone, which is weird. So, so it's going to go through the processing here. And the video uploader has you know, have video sync issues, please refer to, I don't know what that means. But. <laughs> so, what happens when the video gets up there? Okay, so when you come into your YouTube account, and this is real important, you're going to see this upload, but then there's a little arrow next to it. If you click the arrow next to it, you're going to see the video manager and analytics. The video manager is where kind of all your videos are stored. So if I go to the video manager, you know, this is interesting that on Chrome it doesn't like doesn't work. That's interesting. The links don't work on the smart board. So this is my video manager, which will show uh, there's my webcam that got processed. This is still in the processing project. These are other videos that I've done. So once a video gets up into YouTube, it'll come It'll come here automatically. So once you get a video that's, that's uploaded, it's going to come to this info and settings. June 12th, right? <laughs> They've been exceptionally loud this morning, I will tell you. Um, when it comes to the info and settings, and you'll notice kind of the tabs across, and we're going to go through those. But there's a couple pieces of information in here that are real important. So the first thing you're going to have is basic information. So in the basic information, you have the title. Now the title is going to be whatever the, whatever the file name is, or in this case, I did it from my webcam. So you obviously want to probably make the title you know, something that's, that's better, you know, the best webcam ever. I don't know. Uh, you can put a description in, and, and again, this would be useful, you know, from a student standpoint, you know, if you, if, for them to be able to know what they're watching. You don't have to. Tags. Tags are very useful, again, on searching. And so you can put different tags in here if it's on a specific topic for yourself or, you know, that you would know. And it helps you when you go to search, you know, if you end up with, you know, 100 videos, I don't know. 
in there. Uh, because keep in mind, this is all Google space. And they have lots of money, I guess, and lots of ads. Um, so you don't have to put anything in there if you don't want. The next thing is the public or the privacy settings. By default, every video that's uploaded into YouTube is public, meaning that it's out there, meaning that somebody can search YouTube. If they know some keywords, they can find your videos. And you know the one thing with YouTube that you have to be careful about. I mean, you can put in some benign uh, term and get some weird stuff that shows up. Um, so one of the things that became very useful, this was a number of years ago, are the other two settings. Private literally means that nobody can see it unless you literally email somebody that. In other words, they have to be like on your list email, which is, you know, you don't know which student's emails there are. Unlisted is probably the way that you want to go. Unlisted is probably the way you want to go. And unlisted is, it means that anyone with the link can view it. So once you're ready to share this, and I'll go through that process and show you where you share it, you give that to your students, put it in your angel course, they're able to see it. Now, and, but, but somebody coming on to YouTube who doesn't know who you are and does some searching won't be able to find your video. Now, the only issue would be if it is something sensitive, you know, and you give it to a student, and a student could give their link to somebody else. I mean, you know, but really, is that really, I don't know how much that's going to happen. Uh, here's the different categories. This doesn't matter as much, but, you know, education is probably not a bad idea. You also get to choose which uh, thumbnail. So, in other words, when somebody comes on to it, what image shows up first, and you can change the thumbnail if you want. And you also get some, some video analytics. You'll also see views of how many people have seen it and so on. But what's really important is the advanced settings. You really need to click on advanced settings because you'll notice some of the settings. One of the things you certainly don't want, and again, not working on Chrome, which is weird. Um, I would uncheck all of those. Now, that's unless you wanted to do an activity using YouTube for your students to put comments up. But you've got to be careful about that. You know? But again, if we're restricting this to only those people who have the link, then you, you're probably somewhat OK. You know, because again, if you've gone to YouTube videos, again, on a video that is nothing controversial, and somebody can put you know, some really nasty comments on there. Um, but what you can do if you do allow comments, and this is up, you can actually kind of moderate them. So if you do want to do an activity with your students where they actually do, you want them to comment on your video, then you could do that. But, you know, that's up to you. Uh, the licensing is up to you. The standard YouTube license basically means it's YouTube's, it's Google's. Um, if you're not familiar with Creative Commons licensing, that allows other people to take your video and the Creative Commons licensing with attribution means that they just have to give you credit. So that's if you're willing to share it, if you want to share it. That's up to you. Uh, caption certification, you don't have to use that. The allow embedding, I would keep that checked because that's a better way for you to share your video with your students instead of the link. Because then it, it's inside of your course. And I'll show you that toward the end. So that's <laughs> wow. And I go ahead and save that. That's the info and settings. So any questions? So again, when the first time you upload a video, it will come to this page. And you'll have the basic information and the advanced information there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And now videos, too. So if you want to find videos, you know, if you look for Creative Commons licensing, you know that there, people are allowing you to share and use those as much as you want. Um, not download, but you know, share. Because there are tools that can actually download YouTube videos, believe it or not. I didn't say that. So I want to go through the, kind of the rest of these things. So there's a number of things that you can actually do inside of YouTube. And You'll notice that it's this is kind of like their, their video editing 
So in, and, and I bet it's going to get even better. So when you click on enhancements, the first thing you can do is, wow, that's really washed out. So I can just click this button that says auto fix. And Not really that good. <laughs> and what's and neat sort of is that you see this is the preview. This is what it fixed just by clicking that. So I can look like that. Wow, I was really washed out. <laughs> now I'm OK. Um, you can actually you know, trim the video too. Well, I'll, not at this point. Um, that's auto fix if you want. You can actually fine tune it if you want. You can get really crazy and choose you know, the fill light and all that, or just click auto fix. That's what I like to do. And You'll notice that it, um, but you can trim the video to here too. So if you have a beginning, oh my God, I made a lot of mistakes. I don't want to. I don't want that at the beginning. You can click again, clicking on enhancements. You click on trim. It's in the video enhancements. It's right underneath, right here. Not really that good. So when you click trim, not. I can say done, and now the video starts at that point. If you wanted to trim the end, you can say. You know, trim that. But then if you don't want it trim, you can go back to the beginning again. So it's, I mean, this is all done right within inside of YouTube on the web. And that's a beautiful thing because trimming videos sometimes is, you know, can be a real pain. You just say done and it's trimmed. And you can also get fancy with all kinds of different filters here. You'll notice that it's not really that. It's blueberry. And if you want, you can save this, and then it'll overwrite the original. Or you can save as, and it'll it'll go and reproduce a new video. So you can keep a copy of that one. Or you can revert back to the original, and you know, in one click, I can say, okay, I didn't really want any of that. But I want the auto fix, though. Um, the other thing that you can do in the enhancements, and I know this has been an issue for people on, again, mobile devices. If you hold your phone like this, your video is this way. But if you hold it like this, except maybe I have it upside down, I'm hold your video is now upside down. How do you fix that? Well, in the past, it was real difficult. But if you bring it up into YouTube, because, you know, how many people have a video editor on their computer? You just click rotate. You rotate it just like you would an image. And you can get your video now to the right orientation very quickly. Right here, rotate right and left. <clears throat> Another thing that you can do is stabilize. So <laughs> if I click that, what that was, if you have a shaky video, this will now make it less shaky. So it's processing. Let's go back and to the beginning. Because this computer has other things running on. You saw the left at the bottom thing. The this wasn't too shaky. Was Let me see if I can click here and go back to video manager. Ah. So let's see how shaky this was. And now I'm recording. This is Look how shaky hand. that everybody is. is having a great time. Look at everybody's smile. So this is another thing. When you, when you come into YouTube and you go back to the video manager and you click on your video, you, know, you can see down here, this is where you now get the, the various tools where I can edit. But I'm going to go to enhancements. So on this one, and now I'm going to click on stabilize. And watch the difference. Just by clicking a button. The webcam, and everybody is having a great time. Look at everybody smiling. <laughs> it's amazing, in my opinion. And look at everybody smiling. <laughs> you see how shakier that is. By clicking a button, it's stabilized. Well, that's my point. And this is all done within. This is the beauty of using YouTube. It's all done within YouTube. Um, you know, you're not going to have, this isn't uh, Final Cut Pro, you're not going to have all these kind of neat enhancements in green screens, unfortunately. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I have no doubt that Google in so, at some point in their existence may create something like that, where if you, if you did put up your own, you know, green screen, that you could put your own background in. I mean, I don't see why not. Um, there are some additional features here. 
where you can blur faces. So if I click that, I'm not sure how it does some faces and, and, and others. It's really weird. I'm not sure how it does it, but. <laughs> Have you ever used flip cam? They're phenomenal. Oh, you're still there. Though. See the faces. There's see. So there's hide your identity. So if you have students and you're taking and they don't want to be, you know, in there, I mean, again, I click a button, blur faces. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> and then there's one other thing in enhancements, which is try the YouTube video editor. So what if you had two or three videos that you want to put together? This is it dealing with one video. And again, keep in mind, I haven't saved this, and it would say save as. I'm just going to go ahead to the YouTube editor. When I go to the YouTube editor, in this case, there's all the so videos. So once you have your account, you sign on to Wafidi. That sounds really boring. Once I get into the YouTube video editor now, um, these are all of my videos. And here's my timeline that I can put them all together. I can actually put some background music to it. I can put some transitions in. I even put some text in. So all you would I would do is just drag this down here, you know, drag it out. You know, I can trim it. Uh, you know, I can drag some background music into in, into here. <laughs> That's music only, or it can have. favor the original audio or have it like overlaid. You know, again, it's it's not a heavy set editor, but what's kind of nice is, and then this is a project, and you can have a new project and, and give it a name and publish that. So now if I had multiple videos, I can put transitions between them and have something produced using the video editor. All right. Back to the best webcam. So again, that was enhancements. The audio piece, and you'll notice that is I can change out the audio if I don't, you know, want to get rid of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you can see here where where I can have it kind of favor my original. It looks like there's fixed in here. There's searching tracks. I, I don't think you can upload. I haven't seen that yet. We I've looked for that. But again, I, I have no doubt that that may be an enhancement that, that Google is working on and that they will put in here at some point. So search all tracks, 150,000. Yeah. And, and again, and these are all available to you to use because I guess you know Google has. You didn't want to sell that video? You didn't know copyrights or anything? Interesting. I, I assume so. Google owns it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know this is not a good law. Do you know what song 5 is? Do you know song 5? Do you know if they have song 5? Is something King song 5 something new? I don't know. What? Where is it? I don't know. Yeah. Can you upload a video with music on it and then overlay your own images over that? Not that sophisticated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what you could do if you had real, you know, a video editing right. program. But no, this isn't as, as sophisticated. I mean, Camtasia Studio, if you really want to do some stuff, extra stuff with video, I mean, that's, I mean Camtasia, video, Camtasia Studio can do some of those things. But again, if you really want to, you know, Final Cut Pro, you want the professional one and all that. Um, annotations. Oh, and I position the audio. Oh, I guess I can start the audio at different. Uh, this is something new. I'll be honest. And you'll notice that wasn't there about a week ago. <laughs> I just every it's Google. They change. You know, it, it's funny. You know, I'll go back to a quick story. What's funny too is that um, the reason I even did this and I did this training about uh, last semester. And uh, the reason was is that Karen Hesty, another instructional design technologist, were on the phone and talking about some Google videos. And I, and I went into it, and I'm like, where's my video manager? You know, it used to be right here. And then I went, oh, it, they changed the entire interface. And I was like, oh, wow, but they have captions now, and this is really cool. But again, 
this is it cha I didn't have this last time. I couldn't change. This is I was hoping that this would be in here because it's you know I didn't want the the audio to go you know this other audio to go the whole time. I only want to go a certain amount. So I clicked on position audio and I dragged it so it's going to start at you know and at you'll ten seconds. That it's not really that good. <laughs> and, and that's because this And now the audio should start. That's so dramatic. I like that. Um, and then again, you, you go up here and you can save as as a new video and it will it will have to go through the processing point. Welcome to, to our world. <laughs> They're working on the big classroom behind us today. So. And, and by the way, that's going to be a spectacular space. I'm, I, it, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I am sure. So that's the audio. You also have this thing called annotations. Again, you don't have to do any of this stuff. And you'll notice that it's but now, not really and, and I really, good. the annotations, I quite honestly, I still don't quite get. <laughs> um, but you can add a, a speech bubble, a note, a title, a spotlight, a label, or even pause. So if I'm at this point, I can do a speech bubble that shows up and says, hello to you. And I don't know if you can put a link in there, maybe. So if you've noticed YouTube videos where they have stuff that pops up, this is how they did it. I mean. I'm not sure the link will work. And then you, you know, here's the here's the bubble. Let me get rid of that. And then you can change the size. You can change the background color. This is new, quite honestly. All right, this is new. Uh, start. Now the link here. I this is my, this is one of my frustrating things. Is I would like to put maybe a link to a video to a, you know to another um, website. The link, you can only put a link to a video, a playlist, a channel, a Google profile, subscriber, fundraise. So you can't put a link to a website. Yeah, that's the one thing that, that, that's still perplexing. What is a fundraiser? That's a whole, it's an I, I was wondering what that was. It's a whole thing that Google has for fundraising. Yeah, I, I found out and looked at that. So, the link is a nice idea, but it really doesn't work as, as much. Um, and then you can see right here, I can then, you know, the bubble's going to go only that much time. So I can make that bubble go out. And then again, I can add another annotation. I can put a pause in. So in other words, at that point, stop the video and let the user go. So if I go back to the beginning, move this over a little bit. And you'll notice that it's not really that good. <laughs> and, and that's because... There's the bubble. Video stops for a period of time. And it starts. Has other things running Maybe you have something pop up. I don't know. Go crazy. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so these are the annotations. And then again, you'd have to publish this out uh, as, as a kind of a new video. OK? Um, the captions, which is a real big thing. Let's see if they're there. Yes, they're there. So because this is a 17 second video, Google has created the captions already. But if you have like a 50 minute, you know, or a 30 minute video or a 15 minute video, it would, when you come to the captions after it's been uploaded and, been, uh, and, and shows up, it will say it cannot create them. And you'll get worried. You, you wait at least, you know, a, a couple hours or the next day, and when you come into the captions, it will say English automatic captions. So let's see how good Google did. So what you do is you click on this, and these are the captions. You'll notice that this is not really that mental, and that's because with computer. Obviously, there's some mistakes there. <laughs> but you know what? It's not so bad that I can't go and fix those mistakes. So what, I, what you do is you click right here, and you'll notice that it's not really that good. You'll notice that it's, really, that it's not really that good. 
So all I do is I stop the video. That good. <laughs> and, and that's because this computer. That's because this computer. So you see, I've only changed a few things. Now, you know, 50 minute one is going to take you a little bit longer. But keep in mind that if it takes you, and, and I'm putting this on you as faculty, so that people like Rosalind. <laughs> <laughs> because you can do it yourself. And yes, 50 minutes. Has other things I have to solve on that. Has what? I don't know. I don't know what I said. Has other things Ryan on And has other things running. Has other things see that's not too good. Has other things. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Saw a little message at the bottom saying the computer is running a little slow. You'll notice that it goes to the next stop. When, when you click off of it, it'll put a line through that. And his rivals, well, that doesn't make any sense. The computer is running a little slow. So, is. Yeah. Computer is running a little. Yeah, I mean it's not the greatest. Uh, it's 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 just it's Google's it's Google's voice. I mean, if you have a if you get a mobile device, you have you know, and it's not bad. I mean, if and and if, and one other app I would really recommend is the Google Search app because. I mean, I can go, how many quarts are in three pints? Can't. How many quarts are in three pints? That's Google. So their technology is quite incredible. To do this, to me, is quite incredible. After a while, you'll just learn to speak slowly and into the microphone. Well, and that's, yeah, and that's what, and if you are, yeah, if you wanted to do it, really, you, you want to do, but you don't have to. You don't have to make it so, you know, mechanical. You can just talk naturally. But it's not too bad, and I'll go ahead and stop. And it's not too bad. And you'll notice that it's not really that good. <laughs> and, and that's because this computer. Uh, and then I say done. Things. When I say done, what, ha what, what Google does then is it will create a track with English and a track that says automatic captions. You can rename this track. You can have multiple captions. So if I click this track, I can give this track a better name, you know, um, you know CC'd, I guess, whatever. Give it a different name and say done. Then what I want to do, the reason that you want to, what you want to do is when somebody clicks on CC, they're going to see English.cc and then English automatic. What you want to do is disable the one that you don't want the students to ever use. So you actually click on it and you click disable. And when you click disable, you click done. When a student goes back in here, you'll notice that that one is kind of is still there for you to use if you need to get back to it, but it's it's not there anymore. And now it's CC. Now it's captioned. Ready for the students. If the student wants the caption on, they turn it on. If they don't want it, they turn it off. That's one of the big, big, beautiful things within YouTube. Any questions on that? All right. You can also, if you have it in you know text format, you can actually upload one and put it up there. But I mean, why let Google take care of it? Yeah. You can actually download the caption that's in here, too. So if you go here, you can actually download this. And it will put the time codes on it. Because the, the, the beautiful thing is that it's putting the time codes. There's a certain way of doing it. And Rosalind knows how easy that is to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's time consuming. Yeah. It's yeah. time consuming. But, but having this available to you, and then again, having it ready on your mobile device is incredible. So I'm going to go ahead back to Video Manager and go back, go to the, the kind of the last thing, um, which is how do you share it? So when you come in your video manager, I'm going to click on the video. 
It automatically starts, which is annoying. You'll notice the captioning's right here. So if I click on that, the CC. And you'll notice that it's not really that good. <laughs> and that's the changes and, I made. And that's because this computer has other things running on. You saw them. That's what I did just now. And I can turn the captions off if I want. So how do you share? Well, I'm going to click on share. And when you click on share, you get the YouTube link. One of the other beautiful things is you can actually, in the link, say, start it at 10 seconds. If you don't want to start right away, you have those choices. Personally, what I would do if you're going to use this in your angel course is not just to put the link in there. Because what happens is, is students click on the link, and they come into YouTube, and they get all of this extra crap. And if they're anything, and, and I love my son, but if they're anything like you know, today's kids, um, Boy, I'm sounding really old here. Um, they go, oh, wow, Amanda Todd's final video. I have to go look at that. And they have now left whatever <laughs> you have done. <laughs> and, and keep in mind, we have no control over what's here. I mean, the webcam astronomy was real. That's cool, but we have no control of that. So really, it's much better to embed it. Now, and you click on the embed. And when you click on the embed, You'll get um, different sizes if you want. You've got to be careful because you know if you know if it's too big, it wouldn't fit into the angel page. I would just leave it the way it is. But there is one other setting in here that I, I, you, you need to have one. You need to uncheck. And it's really weird that it's in here. It's in the sharing piece because what you what YouTube used to do when they would embed videos when the video was over. It would be done, and they would just see the end of the video. Now, if you've ever seen embedded videos, when it's done, you get a whole slew of ads now, which again, students can click on. And by the way, even when it's embedded, they can still click on the YouTube link and get to YouTube, but there may be won't as much. If you uncheck this, this is my suggestion, show suggested videos when video finishes, they will not get any ads at the end. I, I have this uneasy feeling at some point that Google may take that away because that's their revenue stream, you know, are the ads. But that's the show suggested videos. That's what these videos that get suggested at the end. And you don't know what gets suggested at all. So you have that unchecked. So then I just copy this. I'm going to go ahead and go to my angel. They got noisier. They were they were quiet this noisy this morning. Then they got quiet. <laughs> and I just go to lessons and wherever I want to put it in a folder, I go to add content and you're going to add a page. You add a page of content. I know you'll all be glad to get out of here soon. The most important thing when you do this is by is clicking the source, the second icon, the last icon on the, the, the last row, and then you paste. If you don't do that, it, because you're pasting HTML code in there, it won't show up. So it's real important to, to, to click that source. And then you click Save, and there's my webcam video. Captions. And you'll notice that it's not really that good. <laughs> and, and that's because this computer has other things running on. You saw a little message at the bottom saying the computer is running a little bit. And at the slow. end, I should not get so, any suggested so videos. Yet, and I'll go ahead and stop. No suggested videos because I unchecked that, that, that one ch setting. So when you embed it in mm -hmm. Angel, you lose the closed caption option? No, no, it's right here. I'll, I'll do it again. No, no. It, it, and, and that's because what you're doing, what it's doing is it, it, it's embedding the, the player. This is the Google Player. Mm -hmm. So you're still getting the Google Player, and the students can still click on YouTube and get there, and they can go to full screen if they want. And again, depending on, you know, yeah. For the, for the videos, so sometimes they get bumped off. Google, YouTube videos? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. You that's be, explore, yes. And then you, shouldn't you put it in a new window? No, that has nothing to do with that. That has to do with the show all content. Yeah. But they do that, they click on it, it takes that's, it back to the That's page. Internet Explorer. Yeah, I know. And if, if they want, they can actually, there's, there are some security settings that they can bump down so they don't get that stupid message. But so then there's nothing we can do? No. Even if you put it in your window? Nope. I mean, I guess if you put it in a new window, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know. Yeah. It may then it would ask them to show all content there and yeah, refresh yeah. there, but I would just suggest don't use Internet Explorer. No, well. I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yes. The best thing I, I enjoy putting copy. I have trouble sometimes. But how do you, if you want to add copy to that screen, you have your own copy. Yeah. So if I go to settings and I bring this up, I, you have the HTML or you? no, I click here. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so if you wanted to put, you know, you may want to do that first, and then you click on the source code, and you know, you'd see right here, you paste it in there if you want, um, or, you know, you just have to click in front of that to give yourself some some space. Once in a while, I have to take. I don't know why do I have to make a mistake. I take old code and new code. It takes the old code down to new code. Not, it's not necessary anymore. Yeah, there used to be, um, in here, there's something that says use old embed code. Um, it's not necessary. You know, the, the new embed code does work within Angel. I think it was in the older version of Angel or it didn't work or something. That's YouTube in an hour. Um, any other questions? As far as the clarity of the, the syncing of the, the, um, the video with the, with the uh, captioning, 